Hello, I'm Paul Wilkinson and I'm filming from Kathmandu where I've been making documentaries about Nepali shamanism and um, Himalayan culture for about five and a half years. So I'm filming a, a TV series uh, called The Art of the Shaman and also practicing shamanism and studying it with a, with a number of different shamanic groups. And in the process of that, I, I also collect and deal in ritual objects. So I wanted to say a little bit about um, the depiction of Naga and some of the meaning behind that. So this is extremely unusual. It's a depiction of a, um, a, a shaman, possibly of Banjakri, with very, very long hair, in meditation, but seated on two intertwined naga with a, a four facing naga at the bottom and two naga coming up over their head holding the tail in a, a little bit like the uh, Oribus, the which is a sort of sign for eternity and for the um, and for the earth and in the the hands of the shaman are five five stars and the figure is sitting in the lotus posture um, with a sort of Shivic sign over the forehead. It possibly it's a depiction of Shiva. Um, I've seen this sort of um, covering among the Rai people, so it's possibly a Rai piece, but very, very unusual. It's the only time I've seen anything like this. Um, it was found inside an ancient house in the ruins after the Nepali earthquakes and uh, I was involved in a lot, of, um, a lot of relief work and sometimes objects like that would come up and the people would, would, would rebuild and end up selling some of the objects that, that had come from the broken houses. So it's a, an extremely interesting and old piece. Um, so with something like that, I, I need to find reference points for, for really getting the meaning. I suspect that that particular way of wrapping up and the, the, the four-sided um, actually means something, probably connected to the, the four directions. Um, and the two Naga heads over the, over the head again, I've not seen that represented anywhere. So, it's, it's an interesting object and actually quite a powerful object. It feels, feels really warm and, and wonderful. So I'm wearing a Naga Mala. It's a very, very uh, long one that's made from a, um, a King Cobra. So these, they, when they prepare these, they, the shaman usually finds a, um, a dead snake or Sometimes someone brings a dead snake. The shaman themselves aren't allowed to kill the animals, so um, they, they maintain a sort of balance with nature. And they, they keep the snake in its original form, um, chop off the head, and then they hollow out the inside of a big piece of bamboo, keeping the sort of knots at the, at the both ends, and lay the snake inside the bamboo. So they split the bamboo down the middle, lay the snake inside, and then they wrap it around the fabric. And then they usually bury that vertically in the ground for um, up to 42 days. And for 42 days, the shaman do um, mantra and other Naga-related um, rituals to empower this. So these are used for, they're used for healing and for cleaning energy. Um, they, they wipe the etheric body with them and they also disturb the energy and then pull out negative energy using it. And they used to protect the shaman. Um, and I've, I've seen them used, for instance, when, uh, when a patient is being attacked by um, like negative dark forces and the shaman will sometimes empower the, um, the, the client by, by having them hold it or wear it and then actually cleaning over the whole body. I've seen them used 
in another ritual where they clean over the whole body with the, the Nagamala first and then they boil up a whole load of um, water in a big pot with, filled with cleaning herbs and then they used also cleaning herbs and they quite literally whip the naked person um, or sometimes a person wearing, wearing a towel. They whip them all over with these boiling branches with the boiling water and the steam is coming off them. Um, and again, that's, that's for cleaning the energy body, um, particularly when they're sort of entities and spirits hanging around in the etheric field. This is a very old um, woodblock print, printing block, for uh, Naga Nagpanchami. So it depicts uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Nagas. Um, you have a very particular knot design and the different knots all mean different things. So you, you also have um, fish and st uh, stars and a swimmer and stars, the stars and the sun and the, moon, the sun and the moon here and the Naga are wearing, have like little, little sort of crowns and there's some writing here on the, on the bottom which I need to get translated. Um, apparently in quite an ancient script. So they, they would ink this up and print the, um, a piece of sort of rice paper usually and then nail that or uh, stick it up above a door using um, a mixture of cow dung and kusgrass. Kusgrass is, is sacred to the Naga. So they'll put that up over the, over the door and do special Naga rituals they then often feed the, the picture with, um, with milk as well. Sometimes they, they have special flowers that they'll put around that. And, um, and then that remains over the door of the house all year. Um, some houses do it on every entrance. So I did, I did my own ritual earlier in the year. It's usually towards the end of July and I, I have uh, two front doors and one, one back door where I, I did the rituals. Um, so, and you have a sort of cleansing process before, and so, so you, you clean everything off first. So this is a, um, a ritual that I did during Nag Panchami, and um, you have uh, cow dung and kus grass, which is a very special sort of pure grass that the, the shaman use connected to Naga, to snake gods and they clean the area, you wash everything down and then you have special sort of Naga mantra and um, candles and flowers and you, you stick these um, pictures of Naga up above your door using a little bit of cow dung under the corners and at the top and then at the very top you have a lump of cow dung which they use for purifying things um, and with the cus grass in it and sometimes with flowers and then with the marigold flowers around and then you you also give uh, milk to the to the naga they like they like the purity of the milk and the milk connects to um, the shamanic path has a lot of things that where they describe becoming as clear as milk or as light as a feather that their soul is purified in different ways and so the Naga liking the milk and those sorts of analogies to clarity and purity and innocence are very connected to each other so the Naga in this case is here by my, my main main door or the door that I use most and next to it you can see I have a I drew in chalk it's a little bit faded now because of it's uh, the end of July and it's now um, December, near the end of December. So you have a, a Naga goddess and her long tail coming all the way around. Because of the monsoon and it raining, some of that tail has now washed away and you can see the end of the tail over here. And then if we come round, this is, this is my front door and you have the, the eyes protecting it and actually sort of Naga dragons here on the, on the door handle but above are the Naga and these are from the year the year before and the year before that 
and then these two were this year. So they're different, it, lots of different depictions of these. So in the in the days running up to Nag Panchami, you can find lots of um, lots of different printed versions of Naga, and the same actually for the other Hindu uh, rituals that you've um, and, and different festivals you get depictions of Lakshmi or, or Kali or um, di different different gods and goddesses, and so people then they buy these beforehand and they stick them up by the main doors as a protection for the house and to attract the um, the positive energy. So it's a very nice ritual and it's something that I, I now do every year. Another very ancient woodblock, um, again with ancient script, which is Nepali, but my Nepali friends haven't been able to read it, so I need to, to find a, a real scholar to be able to, um, to translate that. So this is very, very interesting. Um, you've got a big Nara at the bottom, um, a four a Nava pointing in four directions with in the way that it's folded. Um, a Nagini, so a female Naga coming out of the it almost looks like she's coming out of the mouth of a Naga. So it's like a a Nagini is they're sometimes depicted as, as large giant snakes who can turn into um, snakes with the, the top of the body like a, a, a beautiful woman sometimes also just turning into the woman completely without the snake body and then turning back into um, back into a snake again and then often often disappearing into water or into caves or down to down wells um, and then you have fish other writing around more other types of um, knot I've seen this knot in um, various shaman, shamanic designs in, in ritual form. Even more complex knots with other, other shaman here. And then chariots carrying the, the sun and the moon and the full moon and stars. So very, very interesting and uh, looks like Manjushri with a sword here. Um, so extremely interesting and, and again you would ink ink this up and then lay it down onto the, the piece of paper or sometimes put the paper on top like that and then you, you press like that. If you're putting the paper on top you then normally go over with a roller and that, that presses the ink in and then you pull off. So the writing is actually written in reverse. This is a, another, another depiction of a, a Naga. Um, Again, extremely rare. I've been collecting for more than 30 years and it's the only time I've seen a, a naga on a, um, like a butter churn. Uh, so you have the, the, the spindle in here and it's, it's got some Nepali writing again. But you see the, the snake around the neck and then the scaly body very very unusual and interesting object so again naga are often related to um, they're given milk as an offering so it's an interesting thing that the milk is seen as sacred and the naga is um, is also connected to purity and to um, the transformation that's related to that sort of purity in nature so they're very they have a very fine vibration and um, are often thought to be offended by, um, by pollution and um, peeing in the wrong place and, and any, any sort of um, disrespect for, for nature. So the shaman and people up in the mountains are very, very careful about the way that they, they interact, particularly with um, with streams and waterways and caves. They, they, they pay those sorts of places great reverence and respect because they're, they're sort of liminal spaces between different worlds. Here's another, another depiction of a, of a Naga on a, a mugger storm. Um, so you have again the sun and the moon here and the Naga running across the stall 
with the zigzags which often depict water and then animals either either end on this one um, and the penis underneath. So the mother people often have um, sort of fertility symbols within their, uh, their ritual objects and the, the fertility is related to vitality and energy and um, the sort of force of, of, of renewal and, and of nature. Here's a couple of uh, ferber with different sorts of depiction of Naga. Um, this one is from Bhutan and you can see it has sort of Buddhist iconography on it. So you have a Makara, which is a little Naga-like. It's got elements of the snake and of the dragon of, and, and of the crocodile and elephant all combined. Um, but here you have a Naga running up the back on the blade. So this is the same as the um, the intertwining snakes on the caduceus of the staff of Apollo, which now represents the um, it's a symbol for modern medicine. Um, but it, it rep originally it represents the chakras and the energy channels moving up through the, the central channel and the, and the two side channels. And then again on this very very beautiful and rare rare fervor. This time turning inwards and facing each other, and at the point where they cross over is often related to the chakra, to each chakra, um, and then with a metal tip. So, very, very interesting and extraordinary with a badger at the top here, like a, a, a thunderbolt. And here is again a very unusual shamanic stool, very heavy and you can see the scales all the way around it. It's like the root of a tree. And here's the head of a snake. And there's another head of a snake there. And wrapping all the way around, all the way around the object, all the way around it. And it's actually quite comfortable to sit on. It's very heavy. And uh, so again, the, the shaman is using the, the, the seat as a, um, a seat of power, a seat of energy, rooting themselves.